For the last video for the chapter on graphics, I want to pull things together a little bit and actually make a little game out of what we have written so far. Uh, and, and this is going to, to pull some of the concepts that we've seen in, in a lot of different places together so that hopefully you can get a more complete picture of how we might write an interesting program. So we have this program called events and it has a timer. Uh, we have an entity that we move around. It's called, uh, it's, it's actually an image right now. I'm going to get rid of the image because quite honestly I don't necessarily need that image for what we want. Instead, I'm going to make it so that our uh, the location of this, which is currently image X and image Y, um, and I can leave that as our variable names for now. Uh, how about we go with blue? Is going to be drawn as a little blue rectangle. So I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to put it at IMG X, IMG Y. Uh, with a size of say 20 comma 20. So it's going to be a fair bit smaller than the image that we had and that's one of the things that I'm uh, that I'm going for here and so we won't draw that. Uh, let's find IMG X and I'm going to change it to be player X That's all the occurrences of it. MGY. Okay. Let's just make sure that this. Actually, I have a funny feeling that there is still a. A reference to art image here. Um, val player size equals 20, and I'm going to change these magic number 20s into player size. This way, if I decide I want my player to be a different size, I can do so easily. Uh, let's come down here. This is no longer width and height. but it's player size for both of those and the same thing here and again down in these other two you can hopefully see why I didn't want to put magic numbers of 20 in there because then I've now copied this into multiple places in the code and I would be looking around for a bunch of those. Let's make sure that we've put all those changes in correctly. We'll run it. Okay, and I can still do my drawing. I can move around. I want to change the moving around a little bit. Uh, Right now, the moving around goes with me hitting keys. For one thing, it's it's kind of slow. Uh, for another thing, it is it relies upon the keyboard repeat rate, and I'd rather have it attached to the timer. So I'm going to create some vars up here. Left down, leave false. These will keep track of what keys are being held down. Right, up. down, down, um, okay. Uh, and so what's going to happen now is when the, uh, when the key is pressed, I'm just going to say, in this case is up, up, down equals true, and it's not actually going to do the moving or the repainting for that matter. I actually want to take and take those three lines of code and put them down inside of the timer. 
but these only happen if the up key is held down. Um, in fact, let's do this. Uh, insert and that is true. Okay. And then I'll do the same thing for these others. I no longer need the repaint. Let's just, mm, okay, well, paste, paste, paste. Okay, um, these three lines will come down here. These three lines, so it's down. Oops, 3DD. Left. And right. Fix our indentation. Insert down, down, and this one is left, down, and, and this one is right, down, and. Okay. Um, we have one minor problem here, which is that these things get set to true, but they never get set back to false, and so they would quickly, you'd quickly hit a situation where all of them are true. So I want to have another case for key released. And in the situation where key is released, I'm going to set all of these to false. Let's see how close we are on getting that to run. If I hold down the key, one advantage of this is now I can actually move diagonally. Uh, I couldn't do that before. That's really slow. How about we increase the speed of our timer? I would like to have it so that I can move a little bit faster than that. So instead of delaying for 100 milliseconds, uh, I'll move twice as fast if I go to 50. Let's see if that seems acceptable. That's not bad. And so let's draw some things in here. First, let's make sure I can't still go through lines. Nope, but if I hold the diagonal, I can skim along that line pretty darn well. Uh, that's weird. There's something that is preventing me from moving over that way. I bet you it's that, this one that I drew at an angle. Something to note. Drawing straight lines helps. Okay, so we can move around. Uh, we have our boundaries. I want to change something else in here. I don't want the timer to start off initially. Instead, I want to have a button uh, that is at the top that says go. And the way this game is going to work is that you draw lines while you just see the random uh, dots and then you have to move around so um, let's go with a new order panel import uh, order panel dot position dot underscore layout plus equals panel in the center. Um, layout plus equals button that says start. And 
does some code and I want this in the north. I think I can actually just have the code be timer.start for now. Um, actually, let's var drawing equals true. I'm going to make it so you also are not allowed to draw anything else after the timer has been started. So if we go up to the mouse code in here, um, if drawing Okay, let's try this. You note how I type a few lines and then try, type a few lines and try. This is not moving. I am allowed to draw right now whatever lines I want in there. Now I press start, things start moving, I no longer get to draw. Okay, so basically I get to set up a board initially. Now to make this more interesting as a game, uh, I need to have it so that there's some interaction. I'd also like to make it so that you can't uh, intersect with the, uh, so that the, the little green dots can't move through my walls. Um, and I guess that would mean that right now at least you can pin them down unless I change how I generate them. I'm not going to go into that much detail. Uh, this right here, this bit of code is repeated in these four ifs, and I'm going to wind up repeating it a lot more if I make it so that it uh, deals with the random motion of these little dots. So how about we define a function for this? Um, allow move. And what I want to pass into here is an x, a y, and a width and a height. And this is supposed to return a Boolean. Okay. And these things get replaced with insert x comma y comma width comma height. So when I call allow move, I can pass it whatever size I want. So if move is down and oops, and this is supposed to be a no, okay. It's, and uh, allow move on those same arguments. change, get rid of a parentheses, but I'm going to go ahead and edit all of these, and then we'll get rid of that parens, and that parens, and that parens, save, make sure we haven't messed anything up, that goes there, start, Do I have a problem with, let's not draw anything, mm, can't move, did mess something up in the logic. So if done an allow move, an allow move happens if paths for all, it not intersects with what was passed in. Um, Hmm. Player size, player size for the width and the height. For all, not intersects. If there's nothing there, then it should implicitly be true for all, and this should be true. 
and I should be allowed to move. So why is it not allowing me to move? second. I need to remember I have to... no. There's my problem. It's a focus problem. Uh, remember, okay, that's actually, that's a very good thing to note here. That's fine. After you click this and we start the timer, panel dot request focus. Otherwise, the focus is still on the button because we clicked the button. Okay. Now let's see if drawing lines works the way it's supposed to. And things can't, hopefully, can't move through this. Okay, last thing that I would do here, so it would be nice if these were our, so I want these to potentially be new points. But you're not allowed to change them unless if allow move of x comma y comma and I did not put a nice constant in for drawing the enemies. They are 5, 5. If we allow the move there, then p dot x equals x. And p dot y equals y. And so that should Oops. Oh, that should not be a. Um, okay. I had been originally doing plus equals, and I need to put back in some of that. So let's say I draw a line right through there, and another one through there, another one through there. I want to have enough lines that we can see if things run up against them but don't cross. If you watch, that dot was up against that wall here. That one's bumping up against the wall a lot and not crossing through. Okay, so I feel like this works. Uh, the last thing to do would be potentially to have it so that um, when the player intersects with a dot, maybe they get rid of it. Uh, and to do that, I am actually going to change the change that to a var. We've moved all the dots, we move the player, and now then dots equals dots dot filter. Um, for anything such that, um, let's see, let's pull up the API and look in java.awt.geom. Inevitably, our rectangle 2D has a helpful method <clears throat> inside of it that will check to see if two things intersect. Uh, yeah, so we can create a rectangle and ask to see if it intersects with with another one. We could write code of our own to do that. Uh, but I want to do new tangle 2D. Actually, let's do, how about this? So that I only create one of these. 
um, val p bounds equals new rectangle 2d dot double of player x player y player size player size and then filter for only things where not p bounds dot intersects and this I need my point p dot x comma p dot y comma five comma five have a typo in there No, that is a Y. And so I don't want to make this really difficult for myself. But I would like to see if, when I run into these things, if they disappear. Yep. And then we could easily put a scoring system onto that. Another thing to do would be to possibly use case classes to represent these things instead of just a point so that some of them could be good, some of them could be bad. Uh, there would be quite a few possibilities. I also just saw an exception because I accidentally hit the wrong key. And this is something that was has been a problem for quite a while in our code is that my key handling has a match problem. If you type in anything that isn't the arrow keys, right now it'll throw an exception. Okay. So there we go. So we've made what approximates a little game. It could use some scoring elements into it. I'm not exactly certain what the uh, objective of drawing stuff would be. If you had some that were enemies, you might try to do something where you quarantine them off. Uh, you know, there are probably lots of possibilities for this. But anyway. Hopefully that gives you an idea of the type of thing that you can construct using the, the techniques that we've learned about in this chapter. So that's it for, for now, and we'll come back and look at uh, sorting and searching.